right. Well, can you tell us about the band Dementia? Dementia? <laughs> wow, you did some digging. That's impressive. Um, <laughs> well, that was my first band ever. Um, it was with... We played Metallica covers. Um, I was 13 years old. 12 and 13. And what were some of those early Dementia shows like? I think there was there was only one Dementia show, <laughs> and it was at my friend Ben Swenson's birthday party. And I remember we learned some Nirvana songs, so like throw in the mix, you know, because we wanted to play only metal, you know. But we we're like, oh, you know, we like Nirvana. We'll throw some Nirvana in to, to please the crowd or whatever. But I. I always like made sure I wasn't close enough to the mic for anyone to be able to hear my voice. So there's only one show for Dementia. Only, only one Dementia <laughs> show ever. That's right. And Steve, what can you tell us about the Blockheads? <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's probably not often that you see the people being interviewed look so blindsided and surprised. Uh, blo- <laughs> the Blockheads were my high school band in which I played drums. I was a senior, junior and senior in high school, and the other guys were like in college, so I was really excited because I got to play in a locally notable band with like you know guys that I looked up to, and it was really fun. I got to play like my first shows to people. Like We played a showcase for Lookout Records one rainy day at Bottom of the Hill, and... We played shows at like Stanford with the High Fives and like other bands, and it was just really awesome. It made my high school experience super fun. And you grew up listening, or you grew up playing classical music mostly until you heard Paradise City. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And how did that song inspire you? It was the first time I saw something kind of crazy and aggressive because the video is like cut with a bunch of live footage from Guns N' Roses shows, and it's the first time I saw like audiences or like I actually perceived like live rock show audiences like chicks like getting crazy and stuff so it really like impacted me pretty huge and you mentioned bottom of the hill what were some early band or some early shows that you saw at bottom of the hill man i saw the makers which was like an estrus records band uh i saw two night show that was just to brazil the promise ring and knapsack that was one of my favorite shows i ever saw there what about at the drive-in i saw them at great american music hall in gilman i never saw them at bottom of the Cool. Yeah. And Matt, I know some of your early records that you purchased. Um, Faith No More is a real thing. Mm. Metallica, because you're in a Metallica cover band. Mm-hmm. Um, but how did your dad inspire you to play guitar? Uh, mainly by always having music on in the house and um, just by playing himself. He played in blues bands in, in uh, high school and college. And. Um, I mean, he, he wasn't a, a ripper or anything, but he, he could play. And, and um, I think just the natural um, natural imitation, you know, like that a son has for the father. Um, and the, like I said, the fact that he always had really good music on in the house. So it was just always in my head, you know. And, and, and the way that he introduced me to electric, like, to electrified guitar and, and rock was through Hendrix. And it was, it was really cool because... He kind of like waited till I was ready, so as not to, you know, like freak me out or something. And I remember when I was eight years old. He was like, "All right, you're ready now. You're eight years old, son." You know. And so he put he played Electric Ladyland, the last song on it, which is um, uh, Voodoo Child Slight Return, and I like, cranked it, and, I, and it pretty much blew my mind, my little mind. I was like, "All right, man, that's what I want to do." <laughs> what is the Elizabethan? The Elizabethan is uh, a garage converted into a studio named after my mother's middle name because it's the garage for her house. What are some things that have gone down in the Elizabethan? Oh, a lot of parties, a lot of uh, different recordings. And this album, the re- the bulk of the writing and the resignation went down oh, in the yeah, Elizabethan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I lived there for a while when I first joined the band. She was gracious enough to like let me stay there so we could actually do the band. And how old were you when you started practicing there? When did it become the Elizabethan? We didn't name it that till 2001 because a friend of mine, Laron, uh, who, who I met doing a hip-hop project, he's like one of the funniest dudes I've ever met in my life, and he was like, he's like, hey man, you gotta have a name. Like, you gotta have a name for the studio. And he was just calling it The Dungeon or like... He would call it like the like 
Lab 842, or like, because he, he, he just makes up, he's like, he's hilarious, he just makes up names for everything. So I was like, okay, I thought about it, you know, named it after my mom, because without, without her opening up her house the way she did to, to everybody, you know, it would have been a lot different of, a, of an experience. We wouldn't have been able to have the band as we do now without her good graces. Yeah. So we definitely owe a lot to her. Most certainly. Absolutely. Most certainly. So you were practicing a lot at the Elizabethan, um, and in the early days you guys started playing a lot of shows in SoCal. Tell us about the first time you sold out Chain Reaction. I don't know if this is exactly right, but I think it was in 1999. Um, I believe it was our old bass player's birthday, uh, Franz's birthday. I think that's the first time. Um, I don't know, it was, you know, it was euphoric. You know, it was one of those things where you're just like, as a kid, with a pretty myopic, you know, scope of the world, and uh, having gone to see so many bands there, and, you know, when a bunch of kids come and sell out one of your favorite venues, and you're playing, I don't know, there's no feeling really like it, you know, so, it was great. <laughs> now you guys are selling out shows all the time. And you've seen a lot of RxB tattoos on your journey. Yeah. What are some of the most memorable ones? Honestly, like, we've been so fortunate and seen so many, it's hard to pick out. Like, I literally have seen multiple ones of, like, Mandala or Battle album covers that are, like, legitimately really impressive. Where I'm like, yeah. that's just great tattoo work, and wow. It's yeah. Like, yeah. I can say I ran into this kid, and he's a really cool kid, and we see him in a lot of shows in Philadelphia who has an entire back piece oh, yeah, I remember of, that. of the yeah. cover of And the Battle Begun. Oh, wow. And, and, he, and he also incorporates some lyrics from The Resignation. And like, I, I literally started like crying when he showed it to me. Not like bawling or whatever, but like I was like tears in my eyes, like unable to talk because, I mean, that's just like the most incredible compliment anyone can, you know? There is one I've seen on Instagram where a girl has one of our rxb music club t-shirt designs on her foot and it's so well done and i guess that one stands out because the foot is such a painful spot to get tattooed on yeah, and sure. the image is so bold and it's so colored in she had to take like some serious shading to the foot so that one definitely stands out in my mind too so if you're watching this cool tattoo clearly your music has resonated with a lot of different people and you guys have been busy a lot over the past few years well the past decade um but you had time to do a blockheads reunion Yes. Tell us a yes. little bit about that. It was really cool. I mean, like, uh, the guys in the band still live in Santa Rosa. Um, and this old music magazine from my hometown, because there was quite its own scene there, it was doing reunion shows of all the people's favorite local bands, and so they just called and asked me to do it. Uh, while we were on tour in 2008 with Portugal the Man, and as soon as we finished the Portugal tour, I just went home to Santa Rosa to practice with the guys, and we played this show. It was just fun. It was cool. It was just a lot to see old faces and stuff, and... You know, how long was your set? It was just like thirty minutes, and I was so rusty at the drums because I played drums in that band. But it, that kind of drumming takes so much chops because it's like that old school pop punk drumming. You know, did it make you feel like a kid again? It really did. It really did. Uh, it made me just. It totally put me back in touch with my roots and made me appreciate everything again, and just reminded me, you know, why I am where I am. In our last interview in 2009, we talked at length about Fugazi. Um, I recently saw the Evens play, and one of the things that stood out to me was uh, when Ian Mackay thanked the crowd, he said, thank you for coming, and if you wouldn't have been here, it would have just been a practice. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. What are your thoughts? I think that's cool with how he approaches such a consistent... His musical experience is his musical experience is what I take from that, meaning he would play the same if it was just a practice or whether people are there. There's nothing about what he's doing that changes. That's what I take away from that. And that's always like really, really cool, you know? I can't even say that I, I'm like that, you know? I feel very differently and I feel more insecure and I feel more self-conscious in front of a bunch of people, so. What is Buff Costello? Um, when we first wrote It's Only Another Parsec, that's the actual album title. Buff Costello is our working title of that song. As some of our fans know, we have our own personal titles for songs that we write on set lists that are names that come about as we're writing the songs. So sometimes I have a hard time remembering what people know our actual song names as. That song had a riff 
that when I described, we kind of agreed sounded like this Elvis Costello thing. Whether it sounded like that in the end, I don't know. But the riff itself on the guitar sounded like it. And it was like a buff a version. Buff version. Yeah. yeah, so it's like really rocking. So we just started calling it Buff Costello. Like if Elvis Costello was yeah. just like jacked. On steroids and playing like really aggressive modern music, you know? <laughs> We were just talking about Fugazi, and you guys recently did a Fugazi cover for your covers EP. What inspired uh, that cover and the entire EP? That cover, honestly, that was very difficult to to choose because there's so many good songs. And you know, we um, a couple years ago we we learned an entire set of Fugazi songs and played a show, like essentially as the band. I mean, we didn't like dress up like them or whatever. But we did an entire set, and so we knew like 10 or 11 songs already. So to choose, I think mainly it came down to melodically. Um, it would be really hard to do any of the Guy songs, you know, because you don't want to like try and imitate Guy. Like, he's got his own thing, you know what I mean? And it, it, in, in his, his vocal parts aren't, they're not super melodic. I mean, they are in their own way, you know, they're almost like a tonal vibe or something, you know. Yeah, he's just got so that, unique. like, such a cool voice. Yeah. But Ian, his vocal lines are a lot more melodic and, and really like pentatonic and, and are easy to follow and also easy to harmonize. And so we chose Cash Out because of you know the, how melodic it was. And, and um, also I felt like I could, we could create some cool vocal harmonies that weren't there. And, um, but otherwise we kept it, you know, respect to you know, our favorite, one of our favorite rock bands in the world. We kept it pretty pretty similar I found an interview that you guys did in, in 2001 and there's a quote that I dug up somebody asked you to give advice to younger musicians and your quote was if you want to imitate somebody imitate the masters not the apprentices and then you went on to say that not to imitate our expedits because we're the apprentices and that was in 2001 here we are a decade later has our expedits achieved mastery no no never will we'll never the only way for us to be ourselves is to never feel like that. The second a band like us rests on our laurels or feels like that is where our... I mean, it's a term in our world, in our microcosm, that's beat to death, but the, the, their, the progress and the evolution stops, you know? Yeah. I would think to interpret what I was saying as a kid, and, you know, I, I think that was a, you know, that's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool quote that you dug up. I don't even I don't remember that interview at all, but like right yeah, yeah. on, you know. Uh, it make me sound good. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but but um definitely at that time, you know I won't I would never say that we're masters. I don't feel like a master. I feel like I always have something to learn, always have a lot to learn. And I think that's the beauty of music, is you always you can always love music. You always have a love affair. People who are passionate about music you always have your own personal love affair with music, but it will never love you back. And I don't mean that in, 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 a, in a fatalist way or anything. I just mean that in the way that it will always be there for you if you want it to be. But it's never going to be something that... It's never going to be something that just gives to you easily, you know? Yeah. Like, it's there if you want... Yeah. It's there if you want to take it, if you want to, if you want to make it what it is. But, it's, but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't care either way, you know? Um, and so I would say that while I don't consider us masters, we definitely have come a long way since 2001. And as far as, uh, you know, imitation, I feel like one thing I'm really proud of with the band is that we've, we've moved to a point where I feel like from the resignation forward, the next three records, I feel like we definitely created our own style. 